Attack on Titan was one of my favorite series. Honestly, I had no issue with the ending. I thought it kept with the harsh reality that Attack on Titan was meant to be. It was never meant to have a happy ending. If you went into this anime expecting a good chuckle and the warm and fuzzies, then you were watching the wrong one. This is the reason why I thought the ending was perfect. A sad ending for a sad series. I mean, it could have been worse. Anyone seen the end of Evangelion? Yeah. That's essentially Attack on Titan's ending, but even sadder somehow. And it was made worse by the 120 minutes of storyboards, stock images, and constant explanation why Shinji should love himself. It's supposed to be deep, but everyone knew that ending sucked too bad, so they killed everyone. But alas, we're not talking about Evangelion. We're talking about Attack on Titan. So before I continue, I should offer you a spoiler warning. I know that the anime is not caught up yet, and so I assume that if you're watching this, you know what's what. If not, then I'll offer you a small buffer before I get too spoily about the series. Welcome to the Amagi. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Amagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all of our social media. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. Additionally, we've noticed that some people seem to be getting automatically unsubscribed from the Amagi, so if you could double check that you are still indeed subscribed, it would mean a lot. For those who have been watching since the beginning, or at least caught up after half the story was already told, we know where everything went bad. The story was going as expected all the way up to the end of Season 3. During the Season 3 finale, we're shown the final battle between the Scouts and the Warrior Unit. Zeke Jaeger in command, Reiner and Berthold mustered their strength and fought against the Scouts. But because of the quick thinking of Armin Arlelt as well as the medal shared between all Scouts, the willpower to march straight towards death to accomplish their goals, as well as the guilt felt by those who survived, and the ultimate breakdown of command as the battle drew to a close. Everything about that battle showed us how hard fought that victory was, and how no matter how sweet, victory couldn't always cover the bitterness of defeat. And at that point, even though Reiner, Berthold, and Zeke were all defeated, we couldn't bear to watch it. No matter who won, we would be sad, because we saw that nobody wanted to be there, and nobody wanted to fight. But duty forced it to be. In the end, we were all rewarded for our diligence and loyalty to the series when the bombshell was dropped. Humanity wasn't wiped out. Far from it. The entire world was safe from Titans, and the people of Paradise were merely on a small island. Their entire world was opened wide, but for some, this revelation was not the hope-filled knowledge they had sought. It merely told them that there was a new enemy, and that enemy wasn't Titans. It was other humans. The Titans were never their enemies. The Titans were their friends and comrades who had had their humanity robbed from them by those across the sea. And it was at this point that Eren began to change for the worse. Eren realized that even outside of the walls he was still confined. He had merely pushed the boundaries, he hadn't removed them at all. And so he began to wonder what was beyond this. If he killed all of their enemies across the sea, would he then be free? It all began the moment he kissed the hand of Astoria Reese. It was then that he witnessed everything. Memories of the future through the mixed power of the attack and founding Titan. Eren knew what he would do and what would happen. He saw everything. This is one of the complaints I have so commonly witnessed. Why did Eren do it? Eren himself, during his short time with Armin in the path, stated that he had hoped to play the villains that the others could stop him and be the new heroes. The world needed a new Helos, and as such, Eren was essentially playing the new Karl Fritz for Armin's Tiber. But he then contradicts himself by stating that even if he had not been stopped, he would have still killed everyone on Earth except for the people of Paradise. I will keep moving forward. Eren would always keep moving forward no matter what. But the issue with his desire to destroy all of humanity is that we witness his conflict in this earlier on, in which he acts as if he's unable to change fate and that he doesn't want to do it. And from here we're shown a theme within the series. All the characters are a slave to something, and this echoes in the drunkenness speech of Kenny Ackerman. All men live their lives drunk on something, he had said. Well, we're also shown that all men are slaves to something too. Armin is a slave to his responsibility. Mikasa is a slave to love, much how Emir had been. Reiner was a slave to his depression and Marley. Annie was a slave to her own violence, and Eren himself was a slave to fate. So what then? Did Eren have no choice? 
as he marched forward striking Armin and insulting Mikasa, alienating his friends, leading others to their deaths, and trampling the world, did Eren ever have the chance to stop? That's something we simply cannot know. So many theories pervade this ending in Eren's true heart of hearts, but one thing is for sure. He kept moving forward until he was dead, and that death came at Mikasa's hands. And from that point, all men were free until they found that they could not handle their freedom and put their shackles back on, their shackles of hatred. And ironically, it was Eren and Zeke's formation of the Jaegerists that put these shackles back on. And in the end, the curse of the founding titan would be reborn. But I just can't help but wonder if there could have been another ending hidden somewhere, a possible path that could have been followed that would have possibly led to a better explained or at least mildly more happy of an ending. So this is what I want to look at now. So let me explain something I saw from reading the story and began to wonder myself. I first want to start with a personal theory of mine, and from there, I believe we can build a new story of it by looking through a very particular looking glass. And to get to the beginning, we must ironically start at the end. Eren's motivations and mentality as well as the relation to this can only be explained if we look back from a specific point in time. The Founding Titan is a creature of incredible power. The Attack Titan is also incredible, but it's my belief that the Attack Titan was created to be incredible, not by accident, but by design. And I believe that design surpasses causality. For those who have seen One Punch Man's recent arc involving Gero, as well as Saitama's feat to travel time and land a punch that was never thrown, you'll understand my idea. The Attack Titan's ability was orchestrated from the future, not the past. Yes, the Attack Titan's ability was born at the death of Ymir and the consumption of her flesh by her daughters. Ew. But I believe, like so many other things in the series, this was designed from the future. It is revealed that the smiling titan, Garisha's first wife, that ate Carla Jaeger, Garisha's second wife, just dealing with a homebreaker, yeah? Was actually by Eren's design. The smiling titan was originally meant to eat Bertholdt, but Eren manipulated the titan through the paths which exist outside of space-time to cause the titan to target someone else. Essentially, Eren's mission was started solely by Eren. The revenge he sought was to be on himself during the future. Imagine if you were a time traveler who had created a time machine from blueprints you found one day, and then you used said machine to go back in time and plant the blueprints you found in a place where your past self could find them. That is what it is. Eren has set himself on this inescapable path because of how he screwed with causality. But here is the issue. If Eren is solely responsible for these things, then does this mean that he could have at any time decided that it would not happen? Why does he feel so trapped? It's because he is. Eren isn't the only person who possesses this power. Eren's usage of the Founding Titan isn't only himself. The Founding Titan is also controlled by one other being, Ymir Fritz. Ymir Fritz is herself a slave, and during the entire time she was a slave, she waited for someone to save her. That person ends up being Eren, who teaches her how to be free, and from here on, it's insinuated that the entire battle that takes place on Eren's back is solely orchestrated by Ymir. Eren states that he didn't do a thing, he just kept moving forward. If Eren didn't do it, then who did? Ymir is the only other person in this battle capable of controlling the Founding Titan, so moving back, we would realize that while future Eren manipulated past Eren, we should also assume that Ymir Fritz manipulated future Eren to do so. She created Eren. She needed someone with a heart burning for freedom, and so she used future Eren to create past Eren to set him down a path that would inevitably lead to her being free. Have I lost you yet? If I'll be honest, I lost myself for a second there. But the TLDR version of events is that Emir is freed, and because the paths exist in neither the past nor future, Emir can freely manipulate the past and future. She uses the person who saved her from her slavery to create the person who would save her from slavery, and she manipulates him to her own ends. The hatred Eren has was planted by himself, who was manipulated by Ymir to put it there. So in this way, Eren is in control of himself, yet he is also a slave to fate. And this is further insinuated that he was slowly being manipulated by Ymir in a subtle way. There is one scene that's shown in the manga that occurs during the plane ride heading towards Eren. All of the scouts and warrior unit declare their desire to save Eren, and the moment they say so, Eren immediately interrupts their conversation through the paths and declares that he won't let them save him. They must either kill him or give up. However, they notice one thing. Eren is no longer an adult. He has taken his child form just as Amir had, and furthermore, his eyes possess the same dark lines that Amir has. This confuses everyone, including the reader. At that moment, Eren's age becomes a jumbled mess as he's suddenly standing atop the founder's head. He isn't seeing the destruction. He's merely seeing the sky and feeling the wind, free, like a bird. 
Now, I'm about to get even weirder. Remember when I said Emir created Eren? A deeper part of my theory takes that literally. We know one thing, and that is that the Founding Titan can revive dead Titan shifters. In the final battle, we see the return of Bertholdt as well as Grisha, Kruger, and Mystic Sarver. With the help of Armin, they break their hold on the Founder and return to life to aid their former allies in battle. They use the power of the Founder to come back to life. The Founder has power over life or death. I'll go out on a limb here and even say that it is my belief that Eren himself is the reincarnation of Emir Fritz, born herself out of her desire to be free. And this isn't as crazy as it seems. We've already shown that a Titan Shifter lives on within their Titan and these Shifters can give over memories and even personality traits to their successors. This explains why Armin developed a sudden devotion and love for Annie Leonhardt. Bertholdt was the one in love and Armin merely took this in, but on a deeper level, knowing how the Founder and Attack Titan can deal with space-time and causality, I posit that Eren himself is the literal reincarnation of Ymir Fritz. And this isn't so crazy. We're also shown at the end of the series a bird who wraps the scarf around Mikasa's neck, fulfilling the promise Eren made to always wrap it around her neck. So apparently Eren reincarnated as a bird now. And that further could explain why people decided that these scouts would have the wings of freedom. Eren designed the bird to be the ultimate symbol of freedom for them. So with all of this in mind, what will we think? Is there a better ending hidden somewhere else in this story? Is it possible for us to find a better ending? There possibly could be. You see, even though Eren is manipulated by Emir up to this point, he's still in control of himself. I mean, if it's true that Eren is the reincarnation of Emir through the power of the Founding Titan, then he still possesses free will. So let's roll this back a little bit and begin our new ending. Eren Jaeger finds himself escaping the hands of Reiner by hardening his Titan's body. He manages to get out and finds himself running across the streets of Shiganshina. This was the town where it all started, and poetically, this was where it would all end. The yarn of fate had been sown, and Eren knew that they had been sown by himself to this moment. He kept moving towards the carcass of the Beast Titan where his brother called out to him, his hand held out. Eren kept moving forward. Don't stop now, just keep moving forward. Fight. Fight! As he comes to the end of the street, his eyes dart to the right and he notices the lens flare of a massive sniper rifle. A rifle bearing anti-Titan rounds in them. Before he can do anything, it's too late. The bullet leaves the chamber with a thunderous crack and for a moment all time seems to have stopped. Eren's neck is pierced by the round and it feels as if his life has just come to an end. Perhaps it did. Perhaps Eren at this moment has died. His head goes flying as his brother screams out and uses those baseball skills Mr. Kasarver taught him to catch his brother's head in the world's most morbid game of catch. But in that moment, the power of the Founder has been activated. Within the paths, Eren meets with Zeke and realizes Zeke is within chains. He states it feels like ages since the moment Eren's head had detached, yet no time had passed. Does time even exist in this world? Perhaps not. It's at this moment that Zeke stands, having broken his chains. Due to Zeke not being the Founder, yet possessing royal blood, he manages to break the chains that Karl Fritz had placed on the Founder, and perhaps this was the first step towards Ymir's freedom. It's then that Eren turns and witnesses her walking towards them with a pail full of water. It was as if she were still in her home village, living life as best she knew how, yet she remained a slave of the king, even in death. For a time, his brother takes Eren back through time and shows him his life up to this point to prove that he had always been brainwashed, a pawn of Grisha's. Zeke, at this point, was only half right. Eren had always been brainwashed and a pawn of someone else, but it wasn't who he thought. It was himself and the siren call of the Founder Emir. Here, it becomes apparent to Zeke that the Founder and the Attack Titan share a strange connection. Grisha can see them. He can speak with them. Zeke is surprised when he finds Grisha unwilling to enter the chapel and kill the Reese family. He takes so much time, years even, to muster the courage. And it's only after Shiganshin is invaded by Titans that Grisha makes his decision. But his nerves aren't there. He goes in to kill the Reese family, but he can't do it. This is when Eren interferes with his own timeline, essentially orchestrating the events that led to his current being. Zeke is in awe as Eren kneels over. Isn't this what you came to do? Grisha kills the Reese family, and then Grisha cries out, Eren, is this what you wanted? It's then that Zeke gets an ominous warning from his father that things would no longer go the way he wants, and that he has no idea what Eren is up to, but he needs to stop him. Suddenly they're back, but this time it's Eren who's in chains and Zeke planning to make his ideals a reality. 
Zeke would not yet know that his fate is already decided. Aaron breaks free of his chains, pulling so hard that he rips his thumbs off. Rushing to Amir, he would tell her that she had been waiting for him, hadn't she? She guided him there to free her, and now she was freed. Gritting her teeth, tears in her eyes. Right now, for the first time in over 2,000 years, she was free. And the first thing she wanted from that freedom? To destroy those who had so long used her as a slave, kicked her, called her a devil. She had loved King Fritz, but she had regretted not having the power to kill him when she could. This is actually true. This is why Ymir was so pleased when Mikasa killed Eren. Mikasa and Eren was seen by Ymir as a mirror to herself and King Fritz. She was only pleased when Mikasa killed Eren. And all those 2,000 years of hatred had created the very thing the people insulted her as. Right now, she was a devil, and she was going to make sure to validate every single one of the people who had called her that before grinding their bones to ash below her feet. It was then that the strange centipede that had formed the nexus of titan power pulled itself from Eren's body just to grip his head. From there, the founding titan's body was formed, a sick recreation of the status with which Eren's body now was. If Eren's current body was nothing more than a head attached to a spine with the shining centipede making its home within, then his founding titan form should be the same. With a single roar, all titan hardening was commanded to fall. This brought down the walls as Reiner's very armor seemed to explode from his body. Eren begins to march, consumed in a whirlwind of hatred. What was left of his humanity began to dim and flicker like a candle's flame under a heavy gust of wind. Ymir and Eren begin to feel the same. They begin to connect through mutual madness and bond as if they were the same person. Perhaps they would become the same person. Perhaps they were. Perhaps they always had been. Together, they begin to march, their massive form dwarfing even the army of Colossus Titans that began to emerge from the walls. The walls had once been the subject of Ymir's shield against their enemies. Now, it was their sword, a massive flaming instrument with which they could eradicate all people. Marching forward, Ymir's hatred of those who had enslaved her, her fear of once more losing her freedom, and Eren's echo of her sentiments drove it forward. Where once Ymir had been used as a tool by King Fritz, now his descendant Zeke Jaeger would be her instrument, a battery with which her avatar Eren Jaeger could use her power. As they march, they pass through the sea, leaving a steaming cloud on the horizon that can be seen from all directions. They would burn away this world and cleanse it. If the enemy would steal their freedom, then they would steal their enemy's lives before they had a shot to take Eren and Ymir's freedom or the freedom of their kin. On the horizon, there stood a fleet of battleships in what was left of Marley's port after Armin shattered it with his own titan. They began to open fire. To their credit, they managed to shred many of the titans, but the end was inevitable. There was power in numbers, and Eren right now was in possession of the largest and most numerous army in the world. He would offer no mercy. The titans would swim through, their steam evaporating anything above the sea, be it human or vessel. Making his way to land, he would make good on the thought he had awakened the moment he kissed Historia's hand. If he killed everyone across the sea, he would be free. He wondered where that thought came from. Was it his future self telling him to fight, just as he had told Grisha? Or perhaps something more? Seeing the bodies of men, women, and children in the footprints where his titans walked, Eren seemed to suddenly remember his time in Marley before he had made his decision. He remembered saving the boy. He remembered the good times with his friends in the refugee camps. He recalled when Mikasa almost confessed her love. She couldn't say it, but it had been so obvious that even someone like Eren could notice it. Tatake, he would hear in his head. A phantom voice. The same word he had heard when he had made contact with Historia's hand. Tatake, it said. Fight, he responded in his own voice. Fight. Every time he had a doubt in his head about what he was doing or an ache in his heart for what he would do, he would hear those words in his head. It felt like the assurance of a mother to a child, as if someone were telling him that it was okay or justified. But the longer he thought on this, the more it began to dull. The will to fight was being overpowered by his bleeding conscience. Tatake, the voice shouted in his head, seemingly becoming more and more agitated. Tatake! Eren would growl, fight, fight, and then suddenly there he was, in the clouds, as if he had been shown exactly what he was fighting for, freedom. His mind began to become clouded under the illusion of freedom. He was in the clouds, but he had no idea that he had no choice in the matter. The cage he lived in wasn't the walls, and it wasn't the people across the sea. The cage he was in had long been inside of him. He was, right now, just as much a slave to Amir as Amir had been to King Fritz, mindlessly doing Zeke's bidding, despite being perhaps the strongest human in the world. He continued to march. In the distance, he heard voices, though. They spoke to him. Voices of his past. 
friends, family, allies, enemies. They would save him, they spoke, and he felt in his heart that there were no more lines in the sand. If Reiner, who had himself been a slave to Marley, and Mikasa, who had been a slave to Eren, had gotten together despite their hatred to save Eren and the world, what did that mean? Was the cage he thought existed across the sea crumbling? The voice of Amir spoke. Don't trust them. Never trust them. I trusted in love once. It brought me to chains. They will chain you. Enslave you. You must move forward no matter what. Let me deal with it. Keep moving forward. Eren would then break into their conversation, and for the first time since the beginning of the rumbling, they saw Eren. He wasn't the same Eren as before, though. He had reverted to a child, his mind frayed and his visage terrifyingly similar to the one who had borne the Titans. He proclaimed that they could never save him. They must either choose to fight him and kill him, fight him and die, or stay out of his way. And so they decide to fight him. He keeps moving until he finds the last bastion of humanity's defense and fighting power, their last spark of hope. They launch war zeppelins, but Ymir forms Warhammer Titans on the back of Eren and begins to shoot them down. It's then that a seaplane flies over and Eren's friends fall down to his back. They plan to get to Eren's neck. They know that with the Warhammer he could be anywhere, but they need to take the neck out to stop this thing from moving. They also know that when the thing comes out of his neck to reattach the head, they'll need to deal with it. Armin's plan is to transform into a titan and take the neck out, but this plan is quickly ash in the wind when a beast titan from the past eats Armin up. The team fight against these titans, but they're quickly being overwhelmed, and what's worse, Bertholdt has spawned on Eren's back and is defending him. Within the paths, though, Armin wakes up. How did he get here? Was it merely because he was devoured by a titan? Was he dead? Perhaps someone brought him here. Perhaps he was called out to. Here he finds Zeke Jaeger and speaks with him and convinces him to do what's right. Further still, he would meet Grisha, Kruger, and Bertholdt and convince them to help, but Armin isn't done. He refuses to stop. He rushes deeper into the paths where he would find Eren with Ymir. He would call out to Eren and tell him to wake up. He would beg him to let him save him, but Eren would say that if he did, he would be confined to shackles his whole life. But Armin insists that Eren is in shackles right now. And suddenly, things quickly click with Eren. He looks back at everything. He knows the life he had and what he wanted. He realizes that he had lost it all, but then realized he lost it all because he forced it to happen. But then again, who forced him? Was it Emir? Emir would look at Eren. Tatake. Eren would parrot the words. Fight. Armin would then beg him to come back, to be the same Eren he and Mikasa had played with around their favorite tree. He remembered saying that maybe he was alive for the sole purpose of being in the moment, and he told Eren that. He begged him to be that old Eren, but Eren would tell Armin that the old Eren is dead. Armin would scream out to him, You brought back Berthold, Grisha, Kruger, and Ksarver. He should bring his old self back. And from there, Armin feels himself pulled back from the paths. However, these words echo within Eren. He's caught between his hatred and his love, between his fate and his free will. Eren, much like how he broke the shackles earlier by ripping off his thumb, would do the same here, breaking free of Emir's control over him by shredding his very being. Outside, the neck of the founder is destroyed by an explosion. Armin further destroys the body with his own transformation. Armin is walking away from the blaze when he senses Eren's appearance. Eren walks closer to him in the form of a colossal titan. In the distance, all of the scouts are turned into titans by the shining centipede. But as Eren closes in, they prepare to fight. But Eren stops. Instead, he offers him his hand. However, behind them, a new roar is sounded. It echoes out across the grounds, causing the eardrums of Armin and Eren to burst. They turn back to see a new creature forming from a bright and violent golden glow. A massive beast begins to form, its size surpassing even Eren and Armin's colossal titans. Its face the pale bones of death, and its ribcage protruding from its chest like tendrils. It would engage with them. Now, at this point, I hear you asking why in the world Eren and Armin are allowed to fight Amir. Why doesn't she just remove their powers and kill them? And I actually have a good explanation for this. The answer is that Eren has shorn himself into pieces on a spiritual and physical sense. Eren right now is still the founding titan, but Emir is in possession of the other half of that power. She exists through the remains of the former body and is using her half to fight, and she would use it to take away Armin and Eren's ability to fight her, but she can't, because Eren possesses the same power and is preventing it. Along with this, Eren would use his power and bond with his friends to give them back their will, and allow them to speak and act as they once had, even while pure titans. Together they would fight Emir and the Shining Centipede. This is a two-sided battle. 
The biggest threat on the battlefield is Emir, yet she is functionally immortal so long as the Shining Centipede remains. And while Arian is also a founder, he is not the original, and thus his immortality would be negated by Emir, who would not allow him to resurrect if he were killed. They would fight together, but it becomes obvious that they're getting nowhere. She regenerates so fast that none of their strikes can kill her, and to a point, Armin begins to wonder if they even can. Eren says it's possible, but to kill her, they'll need to rob her of her power. Armin would ask how they would do that, and Eren would point back at the Shining Centipede. He would tell Armin that this organism is the source of all of Emir's power, and that she can be defeated if they kill that thing. So Armin makes his way toward it, while Eren holds off this massive titan. This is no easy feat, considering the size of it. Eren channels more of his stolen power to increase in size, however this doesn't help much compared to Emir's body shape. Eren is clunky and heavy compared to a relatively agile form, which puts him on the losing side. As it stands, he's doing everything he can to block her control in him and the others. There is no way he can control enough of this power to transform himself further. As much as he hates it, he would command his friends to help fight. If there was one thing he learned from his time in the squad Levi, it was when to trust your friends. So he called them in. Meanwhile, Reiner and Armin are attempting to get a grasp on the Shining Centipede. Armin is too slow, but Reiner is too light. Armin can't catch it, and when Reiner does, he can't hold on. But that's when they suddenly get the help of Grisha, Kruger, Sarver, and Bertholdt. But beyond that, Eren has managed to regenerate Zeke, who is pelting it with stones as they speak. Together they manage to corral it, and Armin and Bertholdt manage to get a hold on it. They lift it up, and with their titan power begin to generate intense levels of heat, cooking the creature until it begins to decay in a similar fashion to a titan. At that point, a sudden jolt of energy would be felt through every Eldian, and then suddenly, nothing. The titan forms would begin to melt away. As this happens, Emir's titan also begins to falter as it lets out a roar. As it does so, Mikasa and Levi rush through and fire off whatever ordinance they have left into the back of its throat, blowing out the nape and causing it to fall. Suddenly, all titan bodies begin to decay. Eren would rise from the smoldering embers of his fallen titan only to be embraced by Armin and Mikasa. At this point, Eren doesn't even know what to say. Everything he's done and the deaths of his friends he had caused strike him all at once, and Eren begins to cry. Reiner meets up with Bertholdt, and Zeke would embrace his father and Mr. Kasarver. Kruger would watch this from the distance, as he would proceed to try and make peace within the Eldians and Marlians, of which the battle has caused tensions to rise. Upon return to Paradise, Eren and Zeke would call out for the Jaegerists to stand down, and know that the victory they fought so hard for had been attained. The world, having been shattered by this war, would begin to beg for peace treaties, of which Armin would help to foster alongside Reiner, Berthold, Annie, and the others. Eren and Mikasa would end up together, sorry, John, and would have a child of their own. A girl. They would name Sasha. And if you think that Eren gets away scot-free, you're sorely mistaken. He would give himself up alongside Zeke for trial and would be sentenced to life in confinement for genocide. Eren would be put under house arrest, in which he can never leave the premises, but he's okay with that. For the first time in his life, he feels actually free. Peace returns, and slowly the world begins to rebuild. After having nearly faced extinction, nobody's in the mood for any other wars, and they begin to contemplate what's best. This doesn't mean that war will never happen again, though. War would once more come, and the world would be thrown into turmoil. While I would love to spin a yarn that ends with cherry blossoms and picnics and everyone holding hands and singing kumbaya, I just don't have enough faith in people to justify that. Hatred is a beast that self-resurrects and can only be defeated on a personal basis. Everyone in the world has freedom, but they must choose to live in peace. And that means that while there are those who will choose peace, there are those who will also choose war. And when one chooses war, the men of peace must take up arms to protect that peace. And so, though the curse of the titans is gone, the threat to mankind will continue to exist for eternity until there are one or fewer people living on the planet. Sound bleak? I'm only quoting Dot Pixis here, who said the same, and the original ending of Attack on Titan shows us how war once more begins in the world without the need of titans. It's just in man's nature to fight. Sad, but true. It won't always be like this for us, though. Call it a hunch. Anyway, what are your thoughts on this? Did my ending to Attack on Titan float over better than the original? And if something went down that you would change, what is it? I'm eager to know. Leave a comment below and let us know about it. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already, it'll really help the channel. And be sure to ring the bell if you want to know about more videos like this when they drop. Peace.